Thank you very much, Rod, for uh, inviting me to uh, speak today and share our experiences with uh, implementing the sepsis calculator. Uh, so I'm going to discuss uh, existing approaches to sepsis risk assessment in newborn babies, uh, the benefits of using the calculator, and throughout this I'll be referring to our local experience at Monash Health in both our performance against Indicator 2 and also the implementation process. So our story begins with uh, our need to improve our performance against Indicator 2. So you can see there that uh, we have three nurseries within Monash Health and Monash Medical Centre at Clayton in particular uh, is, well out, is an outlier relative to the other level six units uh, in the admission of term babies uh, for additional care. Uh, Dandenong and Casey are other two units uh, lying on uh, the upper quartile. This is the 2016-2017 data. Uh, when we've delved deeper to understand why this is and what's driving uh, that performance, um, we've found that um, the key driver for the admission rate is uh, antibiotic therapy. And in particular, uh, about 50% of babies within this cohort received a, an empiric antibiotic course of 48 hours or less. Um, these are well babies who didn't have culture confirmed sepsis, but nonetheless came through our nursery, were treated, were separated from their mother for the course of that treatment. And so this created a, a, a need to reassess our approach to uh, sepsis risk assessment. So our assessment um, uh, approach has been for many years based on the CDC and American Academy of Pediatrics guidelines. Now, this type of algorithm is what is called a categorical risk factor assessment algorithm. Uh, what it does is it places infants in categories with a wide range of risk rather than providing an individualised risk assessment. Uh, and with the falling uh, asepsis incidence rates um, related to the implementation of effective intrapartum antibiotic prophylaxis over the past decades, uh, these types of algorithms have unfortunately resulted in large numbers of well infants being treated for sepsis risk. And as you see there, the, the rate of treatment is about 200-fold higher than the actual incidence of the sepsis itself in these babies. Uh, now, just recently, the American Academy of Pediatrics have reviewed their sepsis guidelines for babies born at 35 weeks and above, and they have now included in the acceptable approaches to risk assessment uh, this, the sepsis calculator, which is a multivariate risk assessment. And the rest of my talk is really going to be focused on what the calculator is, how we're using it at Monash. So this is the calculator, a screenshot from the website that's freely available uh, to, to anyone. Uh, now what it does is it, it models um, risk based on two aspects. First are fixed uh, maternal factors. Um, it's important that you know your incidence of early onset sepsis and then it takes into account gestational age, the highest maternal and antipartum temperature before birth, duration of rupture of membranes, maternal GBS status, although uh, it can uh, incorporate in an unknown status, and then type of intrapartum antibiotics and um, timing prior to birth. Um, however, it then modifies that risk according to the infant's clinical condition. Uh, and so uh, the calculator gives very clear guidance as to how to categorise the infant's condition into one of three categories. Clinical illness, an equivocal state, or well-appearing. Uh, so as you see there, there are very specific criteria for how to define uh, each of those states. And uh, it's an iterative process where when baby is born, you enter the data into the calculator, also make your clinical assessment of the baby at that time and decide which of the categories the baby falls into. And from there, uh, the calculator gives you a clinical recommendation uh, and then indications with regards to monitoring of the baby also. So this model was developed using a cohort of 600,000 term infants. Uh, and I'll share with you some of the data around um, the evaluation of the uh, calculator also. Um, one note for um, the Monash um, setting is that uh, at the same time as implementing the calculator in November of 2018, we've also introduced universal GBS screening. The advantage of this is that um, we now will know the GBS status of, of mothers uh, rather than being an unknown status, uh, most mothers will be negative and this will also uh, positively impact the res risk assessment results that we have for individual babies. So the calculator really generates a traffic light type of set of recommendations and there are four categories. 
uh, as you can see there, in, uh, infants who don't require any additional care or monitoring uh, and would be suitable for early discharge. Uh, infants who should be monitored more closely but don't require any blood tests. Infants who require blood culture and additional observation. And then infants who require empiric antibiotic therapy. Of critical issue for us at Monash is that there is no screening pathway involving full blood counts and CRPs. And I believe that what we were doing was performing a large number of CRPs and full blood counts as a screening tool in infants deemed to be at high risk of sepsis. This was then driving further intervention. So when you get an abnormal result, that then drives decision making around uh, starting antibiotic therapy. And the American Academy of Pediatrics in their most recent guideline last year have come out very strongly and said that serial inflammatory marker surveillance does not form part of uh, risk assessment in well babies. Uh, and so what our practice change uh, has, has been made now aligns with the American Academy of Pediatrics. So in terms of um, assessment of, of uh, the tool, um, this is a prospective study published of 200,000 um, infants born 35 weeks and above, uh, where there was a change in practice from using the CDC guidelines to the calculator. And uh, the study team demonstrated a 48% reduction in antibiotic exposure in well uh, infants in that cohort with the introduction of the calculator with no adverse uh, in-hospital events, meaning no missed cases of culture positive sepsis. Uh, and equally uh, no increase in hospital readmission after discharge following the birth episode. In terms of the Australian experience, King Edward Memorial Hospital implemented the calculator a number of years ago and last year they published their experience. Uh, they also demonstrated efficacy of the calculator in terms of reducing admissions and interventions in, including blood cultures and antibiotics in well babies born 35 weeks and above and likewise no increase uh, in readmissions after discharge home. So now I'm going to talk about our experience of implementing the calculator. The first step in, in, in implementation is, was to determine our local uh, early onset sepsis incidence. Tanya talked about data grief. This was my moment of data grief uh, when we delved into the data and, and discovered that our background incidence was higher than I had anticipated. So I knew that King Edward Memorial Hospital had quoted an incidence of 0.4 per 1,000 live births for babies born 35 weeks and above. Uh, and likewise, uh, the Royal Women's Hospital, in, in examining uh, the calculator for their purposes, had quoted, they thought, an incidence of 0.5. Um, our incidence, if we look at our moving average over the last three years, in babies born 35 weeks and above in any centre in Monash Health, is sitting at one per thousand live births. And uh, the majority of this is accounted for by GBS. If we look at how that compares with um, other data, uh, in terms of Australia and New Zealand data, I've quoted a few centres um, already. If we look at a, a data set across Australia and New Zealand from 2002 to 2012, the incidence overall had settled out at 0.83 per 1,000 live births and was falling over the prior decade. GBS uh, accounted for about half of those cases and had been static over the 2002 to 2012 decade. Now, the sepsis calculator does not impact baseline early onset sepsis incidence. Uh, the only effective way of impacting that is to have an effective intrapartum antibiotic prophylaxis policy and guideline and adherence to that. Um, but certainly with the introduction of the GBS screening, and it will be interesting to see what happens with our incidence over time. And we will be reviewing this because if our incidence does fall, then we'll be able to um, adjust that in the data that's entered into the calculator. Lower incidence will again result in fewer babies needing uh, a risk assessment and, and further intervention. So another part of uh, establishing the calculator locally was to convince our team that this was safe to use. So I've shown you the uh, international and Australian data that's published. One of our neonatal fellows also undertook a retrospective study, uh, essentially um, taking the indicated two criteria cohort in financial year 2014-2015, apologies for the typo, and looked at what those babies had under our algorithm-based care and compared, to that, compared that with what the calculator would have recommended. Uh, so in terms of, as you can see, we had very high rates of antibiotic exposure in that cohort. In terms of safety, 
In that time period, there were five cases of culture positive sepsis. None of those cases would have been missed as a result of use of the calculator. Um, so the calculator appropriately indicated either empiric therapy or blo a blood culture and observation, which then would have detected the sepsis. Um, using our established baseline incidence of one per thousand live births, use of the calculator would have reduced IV antibiotic therapy by 76%. And uh, as soon as this data was presented to our group, uh, there was immediate support and uh, uh, decision to proceed with adopting the calculator. So in terms of how we're using the calculator, we're using it in all babies born at 35 weeks and above. We're using it as soon as possible after birth, as soon as that first set of observations is available. So that's within the first hour of life in our setting. We've incorporated a two-person check um, certainly initially as we're all getting used to using their calculator and we've established a clear pathway for documentation on the newborn record. And like any tool, this is a assess risk assessment tool. It does not replace clinical assessment and frequent clinical review. And so we've got a very clear guideline around expectations around continuing to use a Victor chart, notifying the medical team if there are changes on the Victor chart and a clear medical review, reassessment of sepsis risk and decision about whether the pathway that was chosen initially is still the correct pathway for that baby. This is an example of the documentation. So each baby uh, board at Monash Health uh, has a care pathway and so we've incorporated the sepsis calculator documentation on the front page of that. So we've adopted a guideline uh, from the King Edward Memorial Hospital and we've provided clear guidance to our teams about uh, the management plan uh, according to the category that the baby falls under. Um, so as I said, babies in the green zone can have routine care. Uh, those in the yellow require additional observation. Uh, hourly OBS for the first four hours, uh, then four hourly OBS uh, until they're cleared uh, as per the recommendation in the calculator. And those in the red zone receive antibiotic therapy. Um, again, any baby who's unwell, has abnormal OBS, must be reviewed by a medical doctor as an emergency. And any baby who falls into the equivocal category as per the calculator is admitted to the special care nursery at the moment for that higher level of observation. Um, this was a, a safety approach for our team given the changes we're undertaking. It, we need to monitor our admission rates to the nursery because we may find uh, that this still drives admission in a way that's unintended. Um, but at the moment, as we're going through a learning phase with the calculator, this is the approach we're taking. So in terms of our early results, given that we implemented the calculator in November 2018, um, I'm pleased to say that we've seen a fall in our indicator two results. I've highlighted here Monash Medical Centre simply because we had the highest rate. Uh, we're seeing similar results across the sites. Uh, but uh, it's really pleasing in January of this year to see that rate down to 13.8% uh, already. And uh, we'll be continuing to audit very closely uh, the impact of the calculator, um, both in terms of efficacy and safety. So the key messages that I'd like to share is that the sepsis calculator is a decision-making tool. Uh, I believe it has advantages over the uh, previous uh, categorical approaches to risk assessment. Uh, Nonetheless, it still relies on close clinical observation and reassessment, particularly over the first 12 hours of life. Um, expect a period of learning if you are going to introduce the calculator. I haven't touched on education, but clearly uh, a long period of, of education and preparing the team um, for the change is important. And as per the American Academy of Pediatrics recommendation, um, any unit adopting this change is recommended to plan for post-implementation assessment to reassure the local team of safety and efficacy um, in your local setting. Thank you very much for your time.